Okay guys, so I know we've talked about cause and effect before. That's what we're going to go over this week. We've talked about cause and effect before um, in science. We had a question over it, I know. We didn't go that much into depth with it, so that's what we're gonna do today. So there's two pages on your slide presentation, page 174 and 175. And I want you to look on right now, 174, where it says comprehension skill. So it's gonna help us understand stuff again. And this is cause and effect. So um, I want you to go ahead and read along with me. So go ahead and put your finger on where it says cause and effect. And then we're going to read the first bullet point. So go ahead and read along with me. The cause is why something happened and the effect is what happened. Okay, so the cause is why and the effect is what. And I actually have that wrote on the board right here. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do something with this later on. Um, let's go ahead and look at the second bullet point. Clue words such as because, so, or cause sometimes signals an explicit cause and effect relationship. So when they use those keywords, because, so, and cause, that's an explicit cause and effect relationship. It's when they use those words and it's easy to see that cause and effect. For example, it started to snow, so the girl put on her hat. This sentence shows an explicit relationship between cause and effect. Okay, so that word so helps us know that it's a cause and effect relationship. Let's go ahead and look at that sentence again and try to identify the cause and effect up here. Um, so our sentence is, I started, sorry, it started to snow, so the girl put on her hat. So what is the why in our story? Why did the girl put on a hat? because it started to snow, yeah. So that would be our cause. The why would be because it started to snow. So it started to snow. And then what would be our what? What happened? Let's look back. It started to snow, so the girl put on a hat. So what happened? Because it started to snow, the girl put on a hat. So that would be our effect. The girl put on a hat. Okay, so our cause, why is it started to snow? So the girl put on a hat, that would be our effect. Okay, so that's what happened because um, it started to snow. And okay, we're going to have a lot of examples up here so we can keep practicing. So I'm going to put some lines there. I hope you can read this pretty decently good. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at our third bullet point. Now remember, those... Um, sentences and those cause and effects that use those words are um, explicit cause and effect relationships. They use those keywords. Now we're going to talk about something called implicit cause and effect relationships and we'll figure out what those are too. So sometimes there are no clue words. The relationship is implicit. So when there's no clue words, it's called implicit relationship. You have to figure out for yourself that one thing causes another. So sometimes those keywords aren't used, and we'll see an example of that whenever we read our story, but sometimes those keywords aren't used, so you have to identify that cause and effect yourself. Okay, so let's look at the fourth bullet point. A cause can have more than one effect. Okay, so your cause can have more than one effect, okay? So maybe it started to snow, the effect would be the girl put on a hat. Maybe another effect could be the girl put on some gloves. Maybe another effect could be the girl pulled out her winter coat. Okay, so a cause can have a lot of different effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and read that last bullet point. It says use the graphic organizer to identify causes and their effects as you read up, up, and down. Okay, and that's kind of what we're doing here and we're gonna do this too as we're reading this story. So let's go ahead and look at that graphic organizer. It says cause, why something happens. 
So we have our y. And then the effect is what happens, okay? Um, and then we're also going to be looking at the comprehension strategy background knowledge. So what we know from what we've learned in the past can help us understand a story. So let's go ahead and read that one too. Good readers use their background knowledge to help them understand what they read. As you read new information, think about whether you have seen, you have ever seen or experienced what you are reading about. Okay, so as you're reading, um, for example, this story is about basketball. So kind of think about um, what you know about basketball. Um, or it's a little bit about basketball. If you, it's actually um, about jumping too. So if you, whatever you know about jumping, I mean, think about that as you're reading the story. So think about that background knowledge you already know. Okay, so let's go ahead and read our story, up, up, and down. And then we're gonna go through and also answer those skill questions too as we go. Okay, so up, up, and down. Go ahead and follow along with me as we read this. Did you ever see basketball players leap high into the air to shoot a ball on, into a basket? Or even higher still to block a shot? How do they jump so high? Okay, so basketball, you need some leaps, don't you? To um, shoot a ball into a basket or even block somebody else's shot. So trying to block the ball from maybe swat, remember that word? Swat the ball from going into the basket. The trick is to beat Earth's gravity. Because of this force, a person is pulled to the ground. To move away from this force, you need energy. Okay, so gravity is what holds people down to the ground and why we can't jump super, super high, okay? So gra we're working against gravity to get ourselves up whenever we jump. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to look at this skill right now. It says, look for a clue word in the paragraph to help find the cause and effect relationship. Is this relationship explicit or impl implicit? So we're looking at that second paragraph. We're going to read it again and see if you guys can identify one of those clue words and then find a cause and effect relationship. So um, we're on that second paragraph. The trick is to beat Earth's gravity. Because of this force, a person is pulled to the ground. To move away from this force, you need energy. So what would be our cause and effect relationship? Well, it's talking about the force of gravity, right? So, um, hold on. So it's talking about the force of gravity. It says the trick is to beat Earth's gravity. Because of this force, a person is pulled to the ground. Because is our clue word, right? Because is our clue word. So what is our why and what is our what? So why does something happen? The trick is to beat Earth's gravity. Because of this force, a person is pulled to the ground. So our why would be... Um, because of Earth's gravity. So the cause would be Earth's gravity, right? So Earth's gravity is our Y. It's our cause. What about Earth's gravity? What happens because of Earth's gravity? Let's go ahead and go back to our story and read. Because of this force, a person is pulled to the ground. So what happens? A person is pulled to the ground. So that would be our effect. Okay, so our why would be, or, or our cause would be Earth's gravity. And what happens because of Earth's gravity? A person is pulled to the ground. So it's a little bit harder for us to jump. Okay, so cause and effect.
Okay, so um, now we're going on to the next paragraph. So, so far we've learned that Earth's gravity pulls us down. Okay, there's a lot of people, how do we jump so high? Um, because Earth's gravity is pulling us down so much. So how do people get up so high? Okay, so go ahead and go to that third paragraph. Think of a spring, or better yet, think of a spring in a pogo stick. You guys know what a pogo stick is? Whenever you're, you kind of hold these bars right here and you're jumping up and down. Um, and it's kind of like a little machine thing, I guess. Think of a spring, or better yet, think of a spring and a pogo stick. Your weight on the spring presses the spring down. That stores energy in the spring. When that energy is released, it is enough to lift the stick and you off the ground. Okay, so um, it's telling us to compare jumping to a pogo stick, okay? Your weight on the stick presses down on the spring, so you are on this pogo stick and your weight is pressing down on the spring and then whenever the energy is stored in that spring you re it's released you kind of lift up off the ground and so does the stick okay so we're going to try to find the cause and effect in this relationship too um, now our last one was explicit because it used that word right it used the word because because of this force, okay, it used that word, so it was explicit. This one's a little bit more difficult because it doesn't use because, so, cause, okay, it doesn't use those words, so we have to identify it on our own, and that's called implicit. So let's try to figure out what our cause and what our effect would be. So we need to find the why and the what. Okay, so why does something happen? Your weight on the stick presses down, presses the spring down. That stored energy that stores energy in the spring, so that would be our cause. Okay, so the cause, what causes something to happen, the weight that we have, our weight um, that's stored as energy in the spring. Okay, so the cause, our weight. Stores energy in the spring. And then what happens because of this? What happens because our weight stores energy in the spring? Okay, so we um, put our weight on this spring and it's storing that energy. And then what happens after that? What is the effect? we go off the ground, right? What does it say exactly? Let's go back and look. When that energy is released, it is enough to lift the stick and you off the ground. So you and the stick are lifted off the ground. Chrissy Addington, please call 221. Chrissy Addington. Put these arrows here so you guys can see it a little better. Okay, so our cause is why something happens. Our effect is what happens. Okay, so cause, our weight is what causes that energy to be stored in the spring. And the effect, you and the stick are lifted off the ground. That's what happens because that energy is stored. Okay, let's go ahead and read the rest of our story. Um, okay, so we have, in a similar way, you can build up energy in your legs. If you stand straight and then um, try to jump up, you can't. You may be able to lift off the ground an inch or so, but that's it, or that's all. That's why you bend at the knees before you jump. So think about whenever you jump. How do you jump to get up higher? You're gonna bend your knees, right? You need more power, so you're gonna bend your knees and then you're gonna jump up. Okay, if you don't bend your knees, you're not gonna get very far. When you bend, it's as if you are putting a spring in your legs. Release that spring and up you go. Okay, so we're using our background knowledge of whenever we are jumping, 
um, we know what's going to get us up a little bit higher. Okay. Um, it also says we need to look at that strategy. Think of what you know about jumping off the ground as you read this paragraph. Explain what that spring feels like. Okay, so as we're reading this paragraph, or as we read this paragraph, think of um, what that spring feels like whenever you jump in the air. Okay, you're bending your knees and then you jump up in the air and it's almost like you're instantly up, right? That's, I feel like that's what that spring is. All of a sudden you're just bounced up there. Okay, so um, just think of your background knowledge. Think of what you know about jumping yourself, okay? Of course, the energy is not nearly enough to overcome Earth's gravity. That's why Earth will always pull you back down again, okay? So Earth's gravity is always going to pull us back down. Now, if you, ha if you were on the moon, the moon doesn't have as much gravity as Earth does, so, or that it doesn't have gravity, so um, you're going to be able to bounce a lot more, right? If you ever saw somebody on the moon, walking on the moon, it's like, kind of like um, slow, slow steps because they're bouncing. There's no gravity holding them down. Okay, so on Earth, we're always going to have that gravity that holds us down or kind of pushes us down, preventing us to jump really, really high, okay? Um, go ahead and go to the next slide and um, continue on with your day because we are done reading this story and talking about this cause and effect.